So my uh, task today is to talk about side effects. Here are my disclosures. Let's see. Okay. So uh, I'd like a little audience participation to begin with, if you all don't mind. So this is a 75-year-old gentleman. He has advanced lung cancer. He's about to begin immunotherapy. You can choose your immunotherapy. He says, I know all about the side effects of chemotherapy. He watched his wife go through breast cancer treatment about five years ago. He says, don't worry, doc. I'm prepared for all that vomiting and diarrhea. He says, I won't bother you over the weekend, though. I've got my Kaopectate at home. That, that always works for me. So what should we tell this gentleman? What should we tell this gentleman? Who's for A? Side effects from immunotherapy, in fact, are very different from the side effects that your wife experienced with chemotherapy, both in terms of what he should expect and about what we do about it if he were to call. Is that anybody like that? Raise your hands for A. Dr. West likes A. Yeah. It's crucial to keep in touch with your healthcare team. You have to tell us if you're having these symptoms, vomiting, diarrhea, et cetera, right? Everybody? Yeah, me too, me too. And immunotherapy side effects can affect any part of the body. So please err on the side of caution and call us for anything. Immediate hands up in the back, yes, absolutely. How about all of the above? Me too, me too. And that's basically the conversation I have with all of my patients when I start them on immunotherapy. Keep in touch, keep in touch, keep in touch. So what are side effects of immune therapy? How do we define side effects? Well, when we activate the immune system against cancer, we see that tumors shrink. When we activate the immune system against normal parts of the body, that is a side effect of the drug. And the immune system goes about attacking colons and skin, et cetera, et cetera. This can affect any part of the body. No joke, we have seen toxicities in every part of the body you can imagine. And what we know is that the earlier we get on top of these things, in general, the better the outcomes are. So as I said before, we uh, encourage patients to keep in close touch with us. We also tell patients that side effects can occur even after the therapy has ended. So we've seen patients who have been off of therapy, had a nice response to the, to the medication. It's a year down the line, and lo and behold, they get an inflammation someplace, and we have to, we have to intervene. So let's talk about how these are different from traditional chemotherapy side effects and what we can expect. So for example, um, if one were to receive chemotherapy, you can see in the middle column there, you might expect a little bit of a headache. People with chemotherapies like 5-FU, for example, right? Common side effect is you get a headache a day or two after. But with time and a little bit of ibuprofen or some acetaminophen, that might go away. Conversely, if you get a headache after getting nivolumab or ipilimumab or pembrolizumab or anything that ends in mab, you might find yourself with a headache that doesn't go away with a little bit of acetaminophen or ibuprofen. This could be because the pituitary gland, which is at the base of the brain, has become inflamed, and the treatment for that is very different from sort of a standard chemo side effect. Same thing with low blood counts. Everybody on chemotherapy gets low blood counts. We expect it. It's going to come back if you give them enough time. Sometimes we give a little medication to kind of help things along. But if you get a low blood cell count on immunotherapy, the investigation begins about whether the immune system is destroying the cells that are making blood cells in the body. So it's very different. As many of you know, the standard treatment for immunotherapy side effects are corticosteroids. How many people have been on corticosteroids in the audience? Those are drugs like prednisone, dexamethasone, decadron, methylprednisolone, you know, lots of things that end in own. Yeah. OK. So how common are the serious side effects? Serious, I mean, we really have to get in there and intervene, and usually we have to do that fairly promptly. These are round numbers, and certainly everybody has uh, differing reactions. But in general, with the PD-1 agents, we see about 10 or 15 percent of patients where we have to do something. That doesn't mean it's life-threatening necessarily, but we have to intervene in some way. It's upped a little bit with the CTLA-4s, ipilimumab, for example, you'll see about 20 or 25 percent. And then that number jumps significantly when you use them in combination. So about half of patients that are getting the combination ipi plus nevo we have to intervene in some way. So these are some common questions, and I, I would welcome your questions as well, but some common questions I get from patients all the time. So 
Do side effects mean that the drug is working? Who has wondered that? Anybody in the audience wonder that? Yeah. Well, we wonder the same thing. And as it turns out, some studies have shown, in fact, that there might be a correlation between patients getting side effects and the drug having an anti-tumor effect. But every one of us has had patients where they've come in and gotten therapy and have skated by without any side effects at all and have had wonderful anti-tumor responses, right? regressions in tumors that are remarkable and long-lasting. So what I tell patients is, if you have a side effect, you know, maybe it means that the tumor is going to, work, the tumor is going to shrink. It means that your immune system has certainly been activated, right? That's for sure. But I also tell patients, if you have nothing in the way of side effects, don't despair. As I say, we've all seen patients with no side effects where the response has been wonderful. So how soon after starting therapy should we expect side effects? People have developed curves about if it's more common after dose number three or at week eight, you're gonna see X, Y, Z. That all is true, but what I tell patients is it can happen at any time. We have had patients that three days into therapy, they call and they say, I had eight episodes of diarrhea this morning. We've also had patients, the gentleman I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, who had a year after having stopped therapy wound up with, with colitis. So as the moment the drug infuses, you have to be ready to call your doc to say, you know, I'm having XYZ symptom. Often patients ask, if, how do they know if a symptom represents an immunotherapy side effect? This is confusing, right? So we, we give them two rules of thumb. The first I like to call the 24-hour rule. And so if you've had a, a meal the night before that was particularly rough on the gut, for example, I don't like to single out Chinese food, but that's what I say in my talks to patients. If you've had Chinese food the night before, and you can, you know, the next morning you wind up and you have some loose stool, and that goes away by noon, and by one or two o'clock in the afternoon you're feeling like yourself, no need to call us. But if you wake up in the morning and you have one, two, three, four, five episodes of diarrhea before four o'clock, and it's going up on 24 hours and it's not getting any better, you gotta call us right away. The second thing is the different than baseline rule. So I'll tell my patients, some, some will say, well, I had my colon out 10 years ago and I've got like six stools a day at baseline. So for them, the rules about, you know, if you get above X number per day, that doesn't apply. So if it's different from what you know to be your own baseline, and patients know themselves pretty well, if it's different from what you know to be your baseline, and that lasts for more than a day or so, time to give us a call. Some patients ask if giving uh, steroids will stop uh, the immune therapy from attacking the cancer, and this is an excellent question. The short answer is that we don't think so. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it's puzzling why the immune system should continue to attack the tumor but stop attacking the rest of the body when you initiate corticosteroids. But we see this all the time, and not just with steroids. We have patients for whom they had a great anti-tumor response, you give them a heavy-duty immunosuppressant because they have some autoimmune toxicity. Thank you. Uh, and, um, and the anti-tumor response continues and the toxicity goes away. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but we never shy away from giving steroids when we need to uh, for fear that this might be the case. In fact, studies bear out that the anti-tumor response continues. So this happens all the time. My side effects are better. I feel like a million dollars. I'm anxious to restart therapy, but my doctor is not so enthusiastic about it. So uh, a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, we know that the duration that the molecule sticks around is, is long. So in studies that were done at Hopkins uh, several years ago, it showed that after a single dose of nivolumab, a single dose, that drug sticks to its little receptor on T cells, the place where we want it to stick, for three months at a time. One dose, so three months at a time. So if I give somebody a dose of drug now, and they have an immune-related side effect, I'm not in any hurry to get them back on drug until things are really settled out with regard to the side effects, because I know that drug is gonna hang around in their body till at least after the first of the year, right? So we want things to settle out completely and not um, damage normal parts of the body before we ramp up therapy again. And secondly, we know that immunotherapy drugs activate the immune system, and this can keep going. This is one of the beauties of immune therapy generally, is that the immune system has memory, right? So when you were vaccinated at age five against the measles, that engendered immunity in you, and here you are 24 years later, and you're still immune 
to the measles. And so, right, so we know that after even a single dose of drug, this can go on and on. So I have patients for whom I've given a single dose or one or two doses of medication. They have a bad side effect. We get them on steroids. We get their immune system down where it needs to be. And we give them no more drug. We just watch because the immune system is rolling. We've treated the immune system, and the immune system is attacking cancer. So we're not in any rush to get the medication back on board. We want the immune system to do what it's going to do. OK. So can I do anything to prevent side effects? Well. Maybe. <laughs> I forgot I put the weak old potato salad in here, yeah. So why do you limit alcohol intake? Well, for starters, uh, if, you, if, you, if you sort of, if you hurt your liver a little bit with, you know, a couple shots of tequila the night before, and you come in and we give you anti-PD-1, it might be that sort of the initial inflammation of the liver combined with the PD-1 can kind of, kind of be the one-two punch, and that, that's potentially dangerous. Same thing with the potato salad and the gut. But uh, secondly, it's confusing to the healthcare team. So if you come in after having a couple shots of tequila and we check your blood to make sure it's safe to give you immune therapy and your liver numbers are through the roof, we don't know if it's because of the tequila or it's because of the PD-1. So we have to stop, recheck in a few days, et cetera, et cetera. So I tell my patients, you know, a glass of wine on a Friday night is fine, but you need to lay off the, the heavy drinking so that we figure out what's going on. Okay. So, some lessons and some take-home messages, and then I'll be happy to take uh, comments. So, uh, important to remember that immunotherapy can affect any part of the body. Right? That's important because people wake up and they have a, a symptom that is not on the standard list that we give you. And so, they look at the list, and it's not on there, and they think, well, do I call? Yes, please call. Even if it is not on the list, please do give us a call. Even if it's minor. So, if it's minor, we've had some great catches when people have called us really early and they say, well, I think this is nothing, but I wanted to tell you X, Y, Z. Turns out it was the very beginnings of something that we caught and nipped it in the bud right away. So very helpful to know early. Side effects can occur even after therapy has ended, even years. And then keeping in touch with the, uh, the healthcare team is the, the, the most important thing. The earlier we find out about something that could potentially be harmful, the better off we all are. So I'm uh, delighted to be here and happy to answer any of your questions.